Every day, workers all over the world jump onto local transportation to head to the factory where they start producing garments for all kinds of brands. They work very long hours to make ends meet, just because they want to live a decent life, to be able to send a bit of money to their family and, most importantly, to give their children a better life. Unfortunately, for many of them, reality is different. Garment workers all over the world work in very poor conditions, make lots of overtime and are paid very low wages. It's these wages that are our focus in this story. Many workers get paid a legal minimum wage. This amount is far from enough to keep a family out of poverty. Many women have to work up to 80 hours a week. Often they are exhausted and hardly see their children. That is why we say that if you want a decent life, you need a living wage a wage you can actually live from. And it's not just something we think everyone needs. A living wage is a human right for all people all over the world. If we all want decent working conditions where people are getting a living wage, why is this not the case? Why don't governments and employers help out these workers? This is because of a few reasons. People who try to join a union that can negotiate a better wage often get fired, intimidated and sometimes even jailed. Governments could set a living wage, but they don't do this because they are afraid that companies will go to another country where wages are lower. Brands are very powerful. They are the ones who profit mostly from this situation. They buy their clothes very cheap from factories in Asia and sell it for a lot of money in Europe and the US. They promise good working conditions but actually earn a lot of money because of the low wages. This is why it is very difficult to get a national living wage in each country in Asia. We need one single international wage. This would make sure that brands face the same demands everywhere in Asia. But how do you calculate a wage that takes into account all the different currencies and different costs of living? After all, a kilo of rice tomatoes or pineapple has a different price in every country. The solution is what we call the Asian floor wage. The Asia floor wage is different in each country, but it will provide all garment workers in Asia an income to buy the same basic needs. So how do you calculate the Asian floor wage? I will show you step by step. Step 1. Let's take the average worker as our example case. The first step is to think about what you should actually be able to buy from a living wage. We begin with the most important, food. What all food items have in common is that they can be measured in calories. Every worker needs 3000 calories per day. She should be able to buy healthy food from a local store or market and prepare it at home. Second, besides eating healthy, she also needs other things. She lives in a house, she needs clothes, she needs money for transport and she wants to be able to see a doctor when she's ill. A living wage should also cover these costs. She spends about the same amount on these other basic needs as on food. Third, a living wage should also support a family. Minimum wage often does not. A wage should cover two adults and two children. In our calculation of a living wage, each person is like a consumption unit. Because children consume less than adults, a child is calculated as half an adult consumption unit. So, she should be able to provide for what we call three consumption units. Finally, fourth, the Asian floor wage must be earned during a legal maximum working week, though not above 48 hours. Step 2. Now that we have said what she should be able to buy from a living wage, how many people she should be able to support and maximum hours of work, we can use this definition to calculate a living wage for each different country. This goes in four steps. First, she goes to the local market to buy food. Then she goes home and cooks this for herself, her partner and her children. She does this every day of the month. Lastly, she also pays for rent and other non-food costs. Great, we have the Asia floor wage in front of us now, but we need to be able to compare them internationally. Because the same food basket can have different prices in each country. For example, the amount of money that can buy her a decent meal in Sri Lanka would hardly buy you anything in Europe. So, how do we do this? Step 3. 
to get to one international wage demand, we are using a method that was invented by the World Bank, which is called Purchasing Power Parity, the PPP. It is a number to calculate how much money is needed to buy the same goods outside of the USA, as you would need to buy them inside the USA. For 2012, this PPP number was set at 540 PPP. This comes down to a minimum monthly salary of about 34,000 rupees for Sri Lanka, 12,000 rupees for India, 1.2 million real for Cambodia, and about 3 million rupiah for Indonesia. Step 4. Now we're getting there. Now we have a way of calculating a living wage, a definition of a living wage, and one wage demand for main garment producing countries in Asia. Workers can use the number we just calculated in negotiations with local employers and the governments to get to the Asian floor wage that is enough to actually live from. And that's exactly what Step 5 is all about. We want consumers and workers to take action. But above all, we want brands and governments to use this amount to set a minimum wage and get an Asian floor wage realized. Together, we need to make a living wage a reality so workers in the world can start living a decent life in peace. Add your voice now!